Welcome back to the Detroit Tigers Out of the Park 24 Sim. We're on June 8th, 2023. This is the second episode of the series, but if you missed the first one, you can hop right in here. It's June 8th. The Tigers are one game under 500, 30 and 31. June 8th is a big day on our calendar because that's when our first year player draft is. We've got the third overall pick. Pretty, pretty big day for the Tigers here as we try to aggressively retool this team. Man, we need to play more games at home. 20 and 8 at home, 10 and 23 away. Wowzers, come on. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you real quick kind of what, what's going on with the team, who's doing what, who's not doing what, and then we'll we'll take a look at our first round pick because we should be able to get a really good player at third overall. We'll see who that ends up being. So the Tigers... We went 15 and 12 in April, 13 and 13 in May. We're two and five so far in June with a two-game losing streak. I guess I could show you like the wild card and all that. So we're six and a half back of the Twins. In we're in third place in the Central. Wild card. We're only uh, one team between us and the third place uh, White Sox in the last wild card spot. We're four games back. We've dropped a little bit. Oakland apparently is surging at 31 and 33, and they've won five in a row. So that's a thing. Uh, tough season for the Angels down here. And, uh, yeah, we've got Braves, Dodgers, and Cardinals leading their divisions. Twins, Mariners, and Rays leading theirs. So let's go ahead and look a little closer at the old roster here. Here we are with our Major League stats. Nick Gordon, who we claimed off of waivers from Minnesota on April 6th, uh, he has played in 45 games for us, 174 plate appearances. He's put up 2.34. 2.3 war and a 165 WRC plus. So do you smell MVP for Nick Gordon coming? Cause I do. Um, yeah, I, this is, this is blowing my mind that he's, I kind of just claimed him because it was going to knock some guys, some of my players down a notch on the depth chart. Really. It was just like to add, he was going to be on my major league roster, but he, I didn't really see him as an upgrade over other options that I had who could play kind of this utility role or play a good second base, et cetera. But I more saw him as just knocking everyone down a peg to add depth to our organization for injuries and things like that. And all he's done in is, is all he's done is come in and be our best player. Now he's a 383 Babbitt. This was much higher earlier, but he still sustains like absurd numbers here. I actually haven't looked at his splits by month. Let's see, I mean, so he was, I mean, April the 216, but then in May he was a 147. Now, so far in five games in June, he's only he's only been 4% better than the league average. So he's tailed off here, uh, but BABIP still humming along at 333. You can see in May he had a 322 BABIP, which maybe he could sustain. Uh, you know, uh, well, Maybe he won't sustain 322, but it's it's more believable than a 489, right? But he had a 322 BABIP and still put up a 147 WRC+. plus. Now, do I think he's suddenly become a franchise centerpiece? I don't. I don't think that. Uh, I think he's riding a really nice first two months of the season, and we'll see what happens from there. I mean, if he sustains it the whole season, it'll get more interesting. Also, off to an amazing start here is Zach McKinstry, our second baseman. He's put up uh, 1.8 war and a 130 WRC+. Plus. He's on pace to uh, start 133 games and put up nearly 5 war, 4.9 war season. So, and he's also done that on just a 275 BABIP. So I don't know. Is, has Zach McKinstry at the age of 28 made the leap into being like an all-star level player? Also not sure I buy that. I, he's had a really good two months, and I hope he keeps it up. Uh, but I don't necessarily think that Zach McKinstry is going, you know, I'm not ready to buy in yet to the Mac Zach McKinstry hype here, but uh, I'm interested. I'm certainly, pay he's got me paying attention now. Miguel Cabrera, you can see, I've kept him in a limited role. He's on pace to play 100 or 80 games with 295 plate appearances, but he's put up a 122 WRC plus riding a 425 BABIP. Uh, I'm, I haven't, I haven't increased his playing time too much just because like, hey man, let's just ride this out. Let's not push uh, push the pedal too hard here. Let's let Miggy be Miggy in his part-time role. His BABIP's going to come down eventually. Uh, he's not hitting for any power. He only has one home run and 111 plate appearances. But oh, and no doubles either. That's crazy. Uh, but, you know, the 333 average, 414 on base with the 365 slug is, is pretty amusing. But, hey, man, he's a singles machine. He's just out there grounding singles through the infield at a high clip right now, and we're going to let him 
enjoy this here in his final season uh, as a Major League Baseball player. Spencer Torkelson, solid, 114. If Tork can settle in as a 110, 120 WRC plus guy, is it like his ceiling of what we'd hope for? No, but we'll take it because there's certainly worse outcomes possible. Albert Almora Jr., our center fielder, who we brought in as a glove first guy, is actually a bat first guy so far. 107 WRC plus. His zone rating is actually negative at negative 0.6. So that ranks, I looked, it was there were like 170 some outfielders in the stats in the sortable stats I looked at. And he was in the bottom third or so in zone rating among all outfielders. So uh, I don't know what's going on with that, but our offense is struggling and our uh, fielding is good, which I'll show you more that in a minute. So we've got patience for him to hopefully bring his defensive game around, especially while he's hitting like that. Austin Meadows, a solid start with the 104 WRC plus. Akil Badu has been up and down some, but he's been solid. Jake Rogers, we will take a 90 WRC plus from Jake Rogers if he can play a solid catcher. You can see he's on pace for three war in 125 starts. We'll take that all day from him. Juan Centeno is a guy that we traded uh, for from the Diamondbacks. I traded a bunch of like minor league depth guys. I mean, some of them are like decent looking players. Like Steel Walker looks like a decent triple a player so a lot of guys like that that i traded um for to get rid of i think like half of lorenzen's salary and brought back centeno now the reason i did that is because he's a lefty bat and both my catchers were righties i waived eric haas and he got claimed by the astros i was hoping to sneak him through waivers uh, cause I, you know, I don't know that Centennial was a, is an upgrade. In fact, I don't think he's an upgrade, but he's a leader. He's an upgrade defensively, a downgrade offensively and a lefty bat. So that's why I did it. And I was hoping to keep Haas in the organization, but he got claimed. So, oh, well, uh, Javi Baez 72 WRC plus that's not very good, but his glove has been good. You can see his zone rating is uh, a plus five. So we can live with this for now. You know, I don't think we're making any big decisions on Javi Baez this season. I think we're likely stuck with the deal or eating some of the deal. So if he can play a really good shortstop for us, we can live with it for now. You know, we can live with it for this season, I think. Things could always change. But if we look at shortstops and zone rating, uh, you can see he's fourth among Major League Baseball shortstops in zone rating. Now, not all these guys play shortstop, of course. This is just all guys who are eligible for shortstop. But... For you know, he's the fourth best fielder so far according to zone rating. We'll take that. Uh, that that's what he's he's got to do. That he's got to be like top elite fielding shortstop for us because his bat has is just not good. So, uh, thank you, Javi, for doing doing things with your glove, even if you are a disappointment at bat. So who else do you have here? Matt Veerling has been very meh. Riley Green has been up now for only 10 games, uh, 62 WRC+. plus. He got hurt in the minors, and he missed like three weeks, but he ended up playing down there for 20 games and was ripping it up, and I had a lot of issues on offense, so I called him up. Hasn't worked out yet, but I've got uh, I've got faith that he's going to turn around. Andre Lipschitz, you may remember from our uh, prospect preview, is one of the guys that I was controlling, and he was... in. And by controlling, I mean promoting and demoting. And he was hitting pretty well in AAA, and we needed an infield bat. He's come up and been terrible in 72 plate appearances. But the interesting thing is he's been terrible against righties. He's had 51 plate appearances with a negative 8 WRC+. Plus. 190 BABIP, of course, plays into that. Against lefties, a 21 plate appearances, a 184 WRC+. Plus. Of course, a 462 BABIP plays into that. But he's also walking 14.3% of the time. If he could be a lefty masher... I think I think I've got room for him and I will probably as we move forward try to you know more uh, heavily lean into that lefty bat you know or bat against lefties uh, platoon for him you know a, a weak side platoon as they call it in the biz I think might might be the chance that Andre Lipschitz has to be on this team right now uh, but certainly a little disappointing that isn't it righties better I don't want to totally give up on him against righties because that's a small sample but it hasn't been a good start has not been a good start. So that's the batting. The pitching side of things, Let's sort. we're sorted by innings here. Eduardo Rodriguez, a 3.05 ERA, FIP around the mid threes. He is on pace for 4.7 war and 6.2 R war, 
which has me thinking he's going to opt out if he keeps this up. He's got an opt out. He's got three years, 18, 16, and 15 million. If he puts up, you know, a four and a half, five, six war season, he's going to get more than that on the free agent market. So, you know, I don't think I'm in the decision. I don't think I've made the decision yet of what we're going to be doing at the deadline. I think the next month or so of games is, is going to let us know if we should be buyers or sellers. I don't think we're going to be aggressive buyers because I think, I don't think that this is our season. So we're not going to like bring in rentals and give up very useful prospects, but I don't know that we'll be full on sellers either. I'd like to keep Eduardo around if he's going to pitch this well. If I do deal him, it's because I think he's going to opt out. I'd like, if I can get back like major league pitching talent who have more years of team control left and maybe cheaper team control. We'll have to explore that as the deadline comes up, but we'll see what happens. Spencer Turnbull, solid season with a 3.6 ERA, 4.42 FIP. Alex Fado, uh, you know, not, not too good for him so far through 13 starts, 5.9 ERA. FIP is almost identical. Uh, he's, he's, you can see he's not striking enough guys out and he's, well, I should say for how many guys he's walking, he's not striking enough guys out. Matt Manning has had an interesting season. If you look at his game log here, got absolutely bombed in his first two starts, had a 19.80 ERA after his first two starts. And then look at this run he went on of earned runs, 0 0 0 And then last time out got rocked by the Phillies, lasted just two thirds of an inning, give up six runs. So his ERA now falls in at 4.14. So he's been overall fine uh, with that being through three terrible starts and then a really solid run of like 10-ish starts there. So good job, Matt Manning. Tyler Alexander has been in the bullpen some. He's been in the rotation some. He's been good. Our closer, Alex Lang, has been excellent. 2.41 ERA. I guess excellence maybe a little strong, uh, but he's been good. Andrew Vasquez I claimed off of waivers from the Phillies on April 9th. He's been the best lefty in our bullpen. 2.18 ERA, 3.12 FIP, uh, 33 innings of work so far across 25 games. Jason Foley has been a solid bullpen arm for us. Matt Whistler has been fine enough, but his strikeout and walk numbers and home run numbers are not great. I don't know how long he's going to be able to stick around. Joey Wentz got hurt. He's made five starts and been good. 3.52 ERA, 4.262 FIP. Oh, 4.26 FIP, sorry. Denelson Lamette, solid out of the pen with the 2.2 ERA and the 3.39 FIP. Uh, also striking out 11 guys per nine with an 18.3 strike to walkout percentage. We'll take that all day from Denelson. Uh, Miguel DePozo, excuse the raspiness of my voice, uh, still getting over uh, COVID, but but much better. Uh, Michael Del Pozo, I don't know if, I think I've got a couple guys coming off the IL and I think DePozo is going to have to go down. He's just walking too many guys. <clears throat> And I need I need better from him. And uh, Vasquez has pitched well. Alexander's pitched well. So he's kind of the third lefty. And I've got Chase Sh Chase and Shreve coming back uh, as a lefty in the bullpen. So Del Pozo is probably about to lose his roster spot. Ty Madden, when guys come back, might go down too. He's, of course, a top 100 prospect who we see a future for 100%. And we had the need for a pitcher for a little bit on the roster because of injuries. And he was pitching well through nine starts in AAA. And he was already on the 40-man. So here he is. And I'm not sure how long he's going to stick around. So in terms of uh, these stats, we are run scored were 10th. So the offense has struggled. Runs allowed were fifth. Our starters ERA is third. Bullpen ERA 10th. Uh, the offense needs a jump start. I'll show you some of the guys who have been demoted. You might notice uh, Maton and some other guys are no longer on that uh, on the 26-man roster. They were just had some guys who were hitting terribly. I'll show you that. Zone rating, second in the AL. Love to see that. Defensive efficiency, we're eighth. BABIP, we're ninth. Uh, so, yeah. 40 man, some guys who just got demoted because they were terrible. Kerry Carpenter, who was really our everyday DH to start the season, put up a 61 WRC plus in 131 plate appearances. So he went down to work on his game. Same thing with Ryan Kreidler, who has a glove. He's a glove, a good glove. He's a glove first guy. Uh, but we just needed we needed something better. Nick Gordon was playing well enough that he could take over the third base job. Uh, Kreidler had 157 plate appearances and a 50 WRC plus. Hoping he gets another shot as like a utility guy. Maybe that will cert serve him better than being the everyday third baseman. Nick Maton, a bit of a bummer to uh, 
to demote my favorite major league player, Nick Maton. He's hitting well in 21 games in AAA, but before demoted, he had 148 plate appearances and a 54 WRC+. Plus. So, you know, Maton, Kreidler, and, and Carpenter were all in the lineup like five, six days a week, and all of them were terrible. So they're all down now. Uh, Castro pitched poorly in limited use. Sands has not been up. Pacheco and Shreve are both on uh, rehab assignments. Brieski has not really been up. Hill has not been up. Um, and that's the 40 man. So now we get to the draft. And we have the third overall pick. So let's jump into the draft pool and just kind of... Uh, go through our options here, talk about the guys that we hope fall to us, and then make our first-round pick. Okay, so we've got the third pick. Slot uh, is $7.92 million. Then we pick again in the supplemental round, too. Bunch of, there are 18 picks in the supplemental round one. We've got the eighth pick there, and then we fall to the sixth in the second round. I don't know if that's like uh, a bunch of people. I don't know. All right, six there. Oh, so we're we're six from then on. Okay, cool. Um, so Pirates, Nats, Tigers, and uh, let's take a look at the mock draft. We are the mock says we are going to take Rafael Velasquez, who is a catcher. I can tell you, there's a zero percent chance I am drafting this guy with a third overall pick. There's nothing wrong with him, but he's not a good catcher. Uh, he doesn't have a good positional home and he's a high school player who just still has such an incredibly low floor um, which is the norm for high school hitters I, I'm not against drafting high school hitters but you can't have this low of a floor for me and not have a positional home there's no way I'm taking a guy third overall with that now later in the first round if I was picking in the 20s or something and and they're going to be, you know, the the most the highest impact players are going to be gone. Sure, I'll take a look at this guy. He's a leader. He's got high intelligence. I would take a look at him there. I mean, if this bat fully developed, even, you know, if he doesn't even grow anymore, but just reaches his full potential as of this and doesn't develop an even higher ceiling, is a really good hitter. But I'm not drafting him third overall. Let's look at the first two guys projected to go. Wyatt Langford is a college bat. Looks like a corner outfielder. Can he play anywhere else? Eh, no. I mean, first base. Um, so it looks like he's a first base, left field, right field guy. Uh, that, that contact and home run power is awesome if he can develop that. And they're already pretty developed. Uh, this is a guy I'd be interested in. I don't know if I'm taking him first overall if I'm Pittsburgh. Then we've got Dylan Cruz, who is even, I would say, even further along in his development and a similar profile can play left and right field, uh, and that's pretty much it. I don't know. Nah, I wouldn't play him at third base with a 55 arm. So I'll tell you the two guys, and I'll look at the draft pool more in a minute and as, I, as we make our pick, but two of the guys that I am super interested in. Number five, Chase Dollander. I don't know if he's going to fall to us. Bonus demand is only $8 million. Uh, now, my scout, I, maybe he could fall to us because my scout is higher on him than OSA. You can see OSA still sees him as a really good pitcher. This guy could come in, uh, I don't know, could you put him at AAA? Probably, right? I mean, my scout says, yeah, he's going to be an above average player at AAA right now. I'd probably start him, I'd probably start him at uh, AA just to let him get his feet wet if we draft him. But this is a potential number one starter. And the thing that's especially awesome about him is he's already so developed. I don't really like drafting pitchers early in the draft, in the first round at all, but especially with a really high pick. I shy away from pitchers because, as we all know, there's no such thing as a pitching prospect, as the saying goes. There's just so much risk in pitchers. Uh, and you can get so many high-impact bats normally available to you with a third overall pick that this would really go against the grain of what I'd normally do. But Chase Dollander is so good that he's an exception to that, right? I mean, we can all have like guidelines we go by when we draft, and I certainly prefer college bats with my early picks, especially a high early pick, because I, uh, I, want, I want a guy who's going to hit, right? And by hit, I don't mean hit the ball, but I mean like hit on the pick. Like he's going to be a successful pick. And if 
I, I, so I often avoid the high variable players here, like high, players with high variance in their outcomes and, and go for a guy who is, is really well developed already. But because if you're picking third overall, it's not like you're picking a guy with a low ceiling. You're picking a guy who's a potential superstar. And I want a guy who's already on his way there and isn't like 17 or 18 and still has so many potential ways that his career could go off path. So Dollander is one guy. And another guy I'm really interested in actually is Jake Goloff down here at 28th to the Astros. Uh, now, there's a chance that he could fall to me with this supplemental round pick, and maybe I shouldn't think about him at third, but I doubt he's going to be there. And he's one of my favorite hitters in the draft for numerous reasons. One, look at how developed he already is, right? And uh, OSA is higher on him. Eh, they're about the, they're very similar. Uh, so he's already pretty developed. He's a line drive hitter. He's got high work ethic. Uh, he's first one to the park, last one to leave. So, so you think he's probably going to develop, and he's probably not going to be a total bust with how developed he already is. He can play a really good third base. He can play solid, solid left and right field. He can even play second base if you need him to. Honestly, I think this is my favorite hitter in the draft, which might sound crazy because, again, he's projected to go 28th. But let's go into the draft pool or let's start the draft. Let's 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 start our draft here, um, and by starting, I mean going to the pool. See what's going on. Let me just show you all batters. So I mean, Jake Goloff is way down there, but let's just look at college because, like I said, I don't think I'm going to look at a high school guy here. I've looked around. There aren't like really well developed high school players. There's not one where you know they're just so far away, like. This is just scary, man. He's got the work ethic, intelligence, but he doesn't have a lot of feeling. Colt, or fielding uh, potential. Colton Hartman, George Lombardi, George Lombard Jr. I mean, looks like he could be a generational hitter, but he also might never make the majors, right? And these are guys again, fifteenth, twentieth overall, sure. Third overall, though, I'd prefer Jake Goloff to this because I think Jake Goloff can be a superstar too. Trey Phelps, right? So these are all the high school hitters. Now, Max Clark is one of the first interesting ones, but he wants an 11 million signing bonus. Interesting because, you know, he can play the field well. A lot of those other guys can't. But I don't think I'd go with Max Clark. So that's just kind of like a sample of the... Uh, I mean, why don't I have intelligence here? I thought I had work ethic and intelligence. I need to add that real quick. So th that's kind of like a sample of the, uh, of the high school guys. And we're going to go in here, and I'll show you how I... He's doing that. Where is it's somewhere in here? Personality or something. We're looking for his work ethic and was it over here? Oh yeah, yeah, it's here. Uh, da, da, da. Is this riveting to see? Personality. There it is. Intelligence. We want that on our. Uh, there we go. Now his work ethic and intelligence is there. So yeah, I just don't see a high school bat here that I love. Now college players, batters. Jake Goloff still really not that high up here. We've got some guys like, you know, I, Yohandi Morales is a guy I'll, I'll definitely consider. I don't love his avoid Ks. He's got low work ethic. He's not as good of a fielder as Goloff. I, I like Goloff more than him. Kyle Teal looks like a really good catcher, right? This is a, like, say Goloff for some reason went, and hopefully I'm saying Goloff's name right. So you guys aren't like, it's Geloaf. Uh, <laughs> Teal is, uh, I mean, Teal is an interesting player. I, he, he would be in the running for me too. I'd say he's one of the few guys that I'd consider as well with Goloff. Not not interested there, not as interested. Nope, I like the other guys better. Hurley? Yeah, this is a good player. This is a good player, but again, uh, can't play as many positions as, as Goloff. So Ryan Lesko, mm, let's see, I don't know. Are you guys starting to see what I'm thinking here? See, 45 range. I went through this like in a lot more detail uh, offline and i'm just kind of going through this now now enrique bradfield jr who's a guy i drafted in i don't remember what sim but i've had him before uh yeah he could play center gold glove center field for you for years but what happens if in a year or two his contact drops to 35 or 40 right like <laughs> he might not be a major league player he might just end up being like a, a really good triple a center fielder who you call up when you have an injury and need need a glove off the bench and i'm not willing to go there third overall 
if I can already see, see that as a possible ceiling for him, here's our buddy Jake, just as a reminder, stud. Like this guy just jumps off the page compared to those others. Now, pitchers, there's no way I would take a college pitcher here, just FYI. Or I'm sorry, a high school pitcher here. Uh, Chase Dollander, we already looked at. Paul Skane, Skanes, Skeens, Skeens. He wants $2 million more than Dollander, but if Dollander went, I, I might have to get him. Is he actually a two-way player? That is not something I'd noticed earlier. Uh, I mean, I don't like the 40 catcher ability. I don't think he could really... I think he could play first base for you, maybe. Uh, but he's another potential ace. And I will seriously consider him... Do I prefer him to Dollander? I don't think so. I mean, I like that Dollander is $2 million less. So let's just look at potential. So Skeens has... We're going to call him Skeens. That's what we're going to go with. Better stuff potential, evenly developed right now. Movement potential is even. Uh, Forty uh, Skeens is a little better developed. Control, Dollander is further along uh, and has much higher potential. Pitches, Skeens has three, and he's got that fastball that's a 70. Uh, he throws 97 to 99, Dollander's 95 to 97. Dollander's pitch is a slider. He's a fastball slider guy. Actually, I think they're both fastball slider guys. Uh, the slider being better for Dollander, the fastball being much better for Skeens. Yeah, I, and I don't really put a lot of faith in Skeens as a hitter. Like, I don't know. That's just like not entering my equation here, although maybe it should because that's like a decent... I just think if I have like an ace pitcher, <laughs> like I'm not going to Otani him. Uh, but maybe I should think about it, right? That's going to be interesting if they both fall to me, which I think could happen. Let's go. So Dollander adapts well and fits in. Nothing else known about his personality. Skeens is consistently focuses on the task at hand, but nothing else known about his personality. Neutral work ethic and intelligence. So if they both fall to me, I think I'm going Dollander just because I think he's the guy I've I've fallen in love with here. Um, some of you might be screaming at me because I can see you thinking that is a wild decision given the fact that maybe Skeens could be a bat too. But I'm just looking at him as a pitcher right now. I'm just looking at him as a pitcher. What's it? So his, oh yeah, 60 stamina. I did not look at that. Okay, they're both 60 stamina. Um, he's a neutral on ground ball, fly ball. Skeens is neutral. Power pitcher. Power pitcher. They're so similar. I don't think guys come with any injury history right no normal injury proneness schemes normal injury proneness okay let's uh let's get into it let's see who pittsburgh's gonna draft here auto draft for pittsburgh oh they drafted paul Skeens. so man i'm gonna be frustrated if dollander goes now i think you know i think at this point we're going dollander or galoff who neither of which name i think i'm saying right <laughs> but but oh well uh all right, so now the Nats are up. What are the Nats going to do? Oh, they went Dylan Cruz. Okay. that's. I mean, that's a very defensible, very solid pick. I think we're going Dollander here. Um, oh, let's save that view. Save. Okay. I think, I think we're going Dollander here. We don't want pitching ratings. We want pitching potential. I mean, you got some. Nolan McLean has really good stuff rating. Oh, but he's a he's a hitter first. This is a two way player. This is like a closer, third baseman. This is a guy to keep in mind for a little later in the draft. Nolan McLean. <laughs> okay. Would be amazing if Jake Goloff fell to us in the next uh, next round, but he, he's not going to. I just don't see that happening. Let's see what our scouting director recommends. Wyatt Langford. This was one of the guys who was out there. Yeah, we're not, we're not doing that. What if I say, tell me which pitcher to draft? Yeah, he's all about Dollander, which is, is to be expected. Uh, so I think that's what we're going to do. 
I think Dollander is the obvious pick here. Well, I don't want to say obvious. There are lots of other guys you could consider and, and certainly justify picking, but I'm, you know, I, it makes me a little nervous to go against my normal uh, strategy of doing a college bat here. I think Jake Goloff is a really good player, but I don't think he's a third overall player when you have Dollander sitting here as a potential ace, like, as soon as, like, next season. Like, this guy could be in my rotation next season or sooner. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and draft Chase Dollander with the third overall pick out of the University of Texas from, where's he from? From Evans, Georgia. I'm not sure where Evans, Georgia is. My main familiarity with Georgia is the Athens area and a little bit Atlanta. Um, I don't remember Evans from my time living down there, but maybe it's right down there. I don't know. So the 21-year-old will be 22 in October, and we're going to draft him. Draft player. I'm pretty excited about that pick, guys. I'm pretty excited about this pick. I'm so glad he fell to us. He was my guy. He was my guy. All right, let's see what the rest of the top five does. Texas picks Wyatt Langford. They were probably pretty thrilled that he fell to them. Uh, that's a that's a good pick to get at fourth, and he was projected to go higher. So Minnesota here at fifth. Ooh, Thomas White, a high school pitcher, who he was in one of my sims. I don't remember which one, but I drafted this guy in a sim. Maybe my Orioles one. I remember this name. Uh, I mean, yeah, this is a, if you're gonna draft a high school pitcher, he's a good one. I'm not gonna draft a high school pitcher this early in the draft, but he looks like a potential stud. Uh, let's let's take a few more picks here. Oakland, Max Clark. I remember looking at this guy. Yep, yep, we liked that guy. High school bat. The Reds are going out and taking Jacob Gonzalez. That's a that's a high floor, low ceiling play. I don't really like that that pick in this spot. I just don't. I don't. I think meh. you know. I'm, I can't criticize the the high floor college players since that's my strategy a lot. But the ceiling, I just don't think is there. Here come the Royals, who of course were booing and hoping they make a bad pick. Oh, they picked Enrique Bradfield Jr. Was it in my Royals sim that I drafted Bradfield? I don't remember or traded for him. I've had him. All right, so let's auto pick until next pick by Detroit. And let's go ahead and set ourselves up for for heartbreak here. Let's arrange it so we can see Jake Goloff. Oh, he's kind of far. He's right there. So auto pick. If Goloff is there, man, we are we are running circles around the house. Jake Goloff. Ah, he went. He went. All right. That's disappointing. Where did he go? Draft him. Oh, draft log. That's what I want. Oh, Goloff went 21st. Okay. So not even close. He went 21st to the Cardinals. Um, any other names that we were looking at there? Like, f just fall way down the draft board? Is that catcher? Who was the catcher that we were looking at? Oh, I think he might still be out there. Teal? Wasn't it Teal? I didn't see him get drafted, did he? I thought that was his. Oh, never mind. Never mind. There he is. I missed him. He went 15th overall. I was like, man, that guy's still out there. We're definitely going and picking him. All right. So college bat wise, I, I don't, I'm not going to, you know, I don't necessarily need to stick to college bats as much here. Although that's a pretty good college bat, Jack Hurley. But corner outfielders, man, are kind of like the last guys that I want to pick. Give me, give me somebody who can play second base like this guy, Maui Ahuna. Thank you very much. Right on cue. He could play solid second base. He could play shortstop, um, and he can play corner outfield. But let's look at let's look at all players, all batters. Wow, still got some really high floor players out here. Gotta hate this guy's defense, but jeez, that's a bat, man. Oh, if he could, but that avoid K's is so scary because he could just end up unplayable. George Lombard was out there. We, we were looking at him. Trey Phelps. Yeah, again, just these guys just... I know I know every guy now is going to have a knock, right? And you can't have a guy with... If this guy didn't have a knock defensively, then he would have been picked like in the top 10, right? If he could play defense well, like he's a top 10 pick. And that's why he's available here. So I don't mean it as a reason that I'm not going to pick him. 
because in the supplemental first round, you know, we're not picking third overall anymore. A lot of players are off the board, so we can. I'm more willing to accept players with fall flaws at this point. Um, but I, you know, I'd still like to make a good pick. Obviously, a lot of a lot of good high school bats out here. A lot of good high school bats. Who's this guy? Oh, it's a 70 gap power. I thought it was 70 power at first, um, but that's I mean Colton Hartman. That is that is a heck of a profile with the work ethic and intelligence. Oh, that's so fun. That he's definitely like probably the most fun guy out there still to pick. Now pitchers, I still don't think I'd pick a, co- a high school pitcher here. Um, if my scout recommends one, I'll take a look at it. Um, yeah, pitchers have kind of. We still got Nolan McLean out there, who of course <laughs> is not just a pitcher, but a pretty good hitter. Uh, I don't think I'm ready to pull the trigger on Nolan yet. Teddy McGraw. Yeah, I'm not going to pick another pitcher here. I'm going with a bat. So let's go to the batters, all players, and go back to the continue draft. Uh, I meant to be in here for this. So we're on batting potential, all players, all batters. I'm going to sort by potential. Who's our scouting director recommend? He likes, he likes George Lombard, who will come in way under slot. Ah, I wish his range was like at least a 60. 55 range I don't love for second base. But, man, that bat is awesome. So, I mean, he he could play a decent left field, right field. He can be your second baseman. If that bat develops, I'm fine putting him at second. He's just not going to be great. Uh, let me look at my draft hitters filter here. You can see there's not a lot of guys. This guy's a 65 infield range, but his bat isn't. He's got a 65 outfield range, too. So he's interesting. But I think I just probably am going to go high ceiling here and just pick somebody with massive flaws. Parker Pico can play all over the diamond, but not maybe not you know not shortstop, not center. He wouldn't be a good third baseman. So he can play everywhere, but he's not going to be great anywhere. Uh, every day he could probably play left and right field and maybe second base. Um. This is the guy who is projected to go third overall, remember? Yeah, still not interested in him, actually. Mock drafts were very wrong on him. I really like Colton Hartman. I know this avoid case is super scary, and I know he doesn't have a defensive home. But what with this work ethic, intelligence, and a leader, what, what if he hit like 70 bombs a year for us? Ugh. I love this guy. I also hate so much about him. As a prospect in a video game, If Colton Hartman's a real guy, I'm sure he's a lovely human. Uh, Who does he recommend if I say I want to take an outfielder? So you can go Hartman. Age, who is this? No. What? No. Get out of here with that. What if I say I want to take a pitcher? Wes Mendez. High schooler. Yeah, we're not picking him. Uh, So, yeah, I think it's between Lombard and Hartman here. What do you guys think? You can tell me in the comments, even though I've obviously already made the decision. Uh, let's def- let's compare them. Yeah, so uh, so Lombard seventy, he's got him in contact. He's got him by a mile in avoid case. Little blow him in eye. Little blow him in home run. He's got him in gap. Um. Let's look at their fielding. Defensive ratings. You know, Lombard can play some infield. He can play some second. He could fake it at short or third if you need to. He could play left and right okay, whereas Hartman is basically just a first baseman or a left fielder or a right fielder. Rating at pitcher, zero. To, oh, that's his fielding rating, right? Neither of these guys actually can pitch, right? No, I mean, no. Hartman looks like he did some throwing in high school for his team, but he's not going to be major. So looking at this man, it's it, you know maybe I'm just falling in love too much with Hartman's awesome profile of the that I don't know if the five bump in home run is worth this avoid K's risk as well as the lack of fielding as well as being lower in contact. Uh, so let's see. Let me just hit the back. Oh, the back button doesn't work here. Cool. 
Hartman, love the work ethic and intelligence. What does Lombard have here? Focus, but frustrates easily. So, you know, that's, that's a little concerning for sure. It's definitely a little concerning, but uh, Hartman is definitely the more fun pick, but I feel like Lombard's probably the right pick. I think it's, it's the best way to justify what I'm wrestling with in my head right now. Uh, perhaps I'm judging you or driving you guys crazy with how much I'm deliberating over this, but <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. They're both well under slot. Maybe Hartman will be there in the third round. I doubt it. Oh, what does OSA think? Yeah. 30 avoid case. Maybe he will be there next round. I doubt it though. He's just so good. So my scout is higher on Lombard. Yeah, I'm going to draft Lombard. It's who my scout's recommending. I see why he's the better player than Hartman. Certainly the less fun player. Doesn't have the work ethic and intelligence. Um, hold on a second. Doesn't have the work ethic and intelligence, but yeah, I'm going to go Hartman. I mean, I'm going to go Lombard. Sorry. Sorry for you Hartman fans. Uh, I'm a Hartman fan too. We're, we'll need to follow his career, uh, if, especially if we don't draft him. So we're going to draft George Lombard out of Gulf, Gulliver Prep in Miami, Florida. Welcome to the team. It hurts me a little bit to not pick Hartman, but it's what we had to do. All right, let's see if Hartman's still there. Next pick. Guys, he's still there. He's st Oh, easy pick. Easy pick here. What is our – let's see what our scouting director says. Ty Pete. Yeah, no, we're going Hartman. Going Hartman over this guy for sure. Yeah. Oh, this is – what a win. What a win. We're picking Colton Hartman. Get in here, big guy. So out of Lebanon in Ohio in the second round, uh, we are going to pick Colton Hartman, and we love it. Gosh, I love this pick. I love that I got both of them. All right, so I'll finish the rest of the draft, and we'll pick up the video a little further down the road as we get into – the trade deadline and our decisions there but thank you for uh joining me on that journey here as we were able to nab the guy i mean this is, i'm so excited about this draft we got the guy we wanted it with third overall and then we got both the guys that i wanted 37th overall at 37 and 53rd at 53rd yeah um both them are under slot too which is outstanding uh so yeah all right i'll finish this draft off and uh, we'll hop back in here. Thanks, uh, thanks for going on that draft journey with me, though. So coming out of the All-Star break, uh, we pooped the bed here. We were 45 and 45 at the break. And we then lost six in a row. We lost eight of nine. We're now 47 and 53 with just a week to go until the deadline. I think certainly makes our approach easier. And, of course, this won't be a full sell-off, but with, like, some of our... Uh, pending free agents I think it makes a lot of those decisions easier we're you know we're not catching the twins we're 13 and a half out there uh the wild card I mean we're only three and a half back right but now it's just so many teams we're mixed in with it's a tough decision uh it, it, well I would say it's not as tough as it was a week ago but it's still not like a clear-cut decision now Torque is on the IL he he broke a finger i think so he was out like a month what does he have left uh yeah fractured finger he's got another three weeks left we had made a trade and that guy's now playing first base where uh first base against righties uh jonathan aranda we brought in from the rays who became interested in tyler alexander who you may remember was having a good season for us he's gone over there for them and not done much you always get a little worried when the rays were like yeah we'll take this dude from you we'll take this 29 year old journeyman and like they'll turn him into an ace right uh, in real life. So we've got Aranda who he's 25. So I don't know if we can really call him a prospect at this point. He's getting a little older. Uh, doesn't have great defensive profile. Uh, you know, he could get some outfield experience and play the corner. He could play all over the infield, but nowhere very well. And I, I don't know if a lot, I don't think he's going to be like a centerpiece for us, but he, he maybe could be uh, a right-handed bat who who can play a few different positions but he's getting a run now with torque out uh against righties at first base but yeah so where does this leave us with guys 
that we could trade. So we've got Albert Almora Jr., who has slumped and cooled off a bit. He's down to the 89 WRC+, plus, only on pace for 1.2 war. I shopped him around about two weeks ago, and some of the offers were really good. Uh, <clears throat> in some ways, it made me think, like, I need to bump up the trade difficulty. But in other ways, it was like... It was only like two or three teams that were offering me really good prospects for him. I think it was two. It's like the Rays and the Yankees were both like, we need this guy. Uh, the top guy being Oswaldo Peraza, the Yankees were willing to give me. I didn't pull the trigger because, one, I was like, this trade feels a little like I should police myself here. And also I was like, I don't know what I'm doing with this team yet. But Almore is a guy who I think can go no matter what this team does, like even if we were to win like another seven in a row because we've got – Bum, bum. Where is he? Parker Meadows. Where you at, Parker? Oh, wait. Did they put him on the IL? They might have put him on the IL because he's he was dealing with a day-to-day -day injury. Is he Parker? Parker. So they must have put him on the IL. He was day-to-day. -day. Okay, yeah. So he's got a quad strain. He's got one week left. So I probably wouldn't call him up for like two weeks, but you can see he's hitting really well. I mean, 70 range center fielder, and I think OSA is in the 75 still, yeah. So I, I, he's probably an upgrade over, um, what's his name at this point, Almora Jr. So we can trade Albert Almora Jr., I think, with, with no concerns because we've got a replacement even if we go on a win streak. Uh, you know, I'm not going to trade Nick Gordon yet, even though I, I, I don't know that I buy this, that he's a six-war player. In the offseason, I think we'll definitely see what we can get for him, see if somebody does buy that moving forward. Other than that, we've got Chase and Shreve. We've got Matt Whistler. Maybe some other guys that like have kind of worked their way out of our plans next year. Like Alex Fayedo has just not been very good. And we've got a ton of pitching prospects coming. The prospects rankings updated. You can see Chase Tollander is third. But then here's Jackson Job who hasn't pitched yet. But then Flores, Herder, and Madden who are now up. They've all established. I mean, I've got five top prospects in the top 55, and they're all starting pitchers. Our farm system jumped to second. So, uh, yeah, I think we've got a lot of pitching on the way. Now, could we use like an ace? Sure, but I don't think we're going to get an ace here around the deadline. You know, a player who has multiple years of team control. I think that's more like an off-season trade that we look at if we want to do that. The really interesting decision is on Eduardo R Rodriguez, who has that opt-out. He makes $18 million next year. He's on pace for 4.7 war, 6.5 R war. He's got an ERA under three. We got to listen to offers on him, I think. I think I've got to shop him around, see what happens. I could see holding on to him, though, because I think I would just offer him the qualifying offer if he opted out. Is he? Uh, it doesn't say here if he's been offered it before. Normally it tells you. Maybe that's only it starts new in this sim. So that's where we're at. So let's, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to punt on the Erod decision for another few days, but let's see if good offers are still out there for. Almora Jr. We've got a few relievers, got a few guys who might not be in our plans next year, uh, but kind of hop into trading, you know, looking at those trades. So let's shop Almora Jr. around, see if teams are still as interested as they were uh, before our slide, before his slide. Uh, let's just go ahead and see who the best prospect we can get for him is to start. Yeah, you can see like, you know, there are a few decent names here. Like uh, Cesar Prieto is a decent Orioles prospect, uh, you know, and out of the park, I, I don't think this guy is going to be a star for you for sure. He's a, he's a decent prospect, but meh. And let's see, you know, so the Yankees are still very interested, but they no longer have Oswaldo Cabrera out there. So maybe I screwed up by not, not doing that. But honestly, like I feel, this is still a top 100 prospect though. Johnny Brito, uh, you know, I think I need to go hitter here, and I need to go a guy who's close to major league ready. Wow, 17-year-old. You don't see the computer offer 17-year-olds often. Uh, Austin Wells. Yeah, I mean, I'd really like, I think I'd like an, ooh, wow, way fewer teams interested. But yeah, here the, so here the Rays are. Uh, Mason, is it R? I, if I trade for him, I'm going to need to learn to pronounce it. Pretty interesting guy here. He's 22. He's not having a great season in high A, but my scout still thinks he's good. My scout is higher on him uh, in terms of potential than OSA, but he could also play third base for you. So he's probably, he's like a left field, right field, third base, first base. So he can play like the, you know, the corners of the field. Uh, could, 
could maybe play a little second base for you if you needed him to, could maybe play a little center field for him if you needed him to, like in really short bursts, I think, right? Uh, not with any regularity. So I think this is a pretty interesting guy to bring in. I wish he was a little further along or having a better year. Um, is Levis here? Uh, can he play outfield at all? He can. So this guy, I think, could play second. He could play left or right. Fake it at short. 60 arm isn't great at third, but he could be there if you needed him to. And where's he playing? He's in AAA and having a, a pretty decent season. Ground ball hitter. Don't love that. What was Mason here? Line drive hitter. Love that. Uh, he's 22. Also 22. Yeah, I think that even I, I like a lot better about Bazab. Bazabe, Bazabe, sorry. <laughs> uh, about him, I like I like a lot about this guy better, but no power, um, no power in ground ball hitter is what I don't love. But he's got a better defensive profile. But I'd almost rather go for the higher ceiling player here in Mason R. Aware. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you guys are. Uh, I'm sure, hope you enjoy me butchering these uh, these names here. Uh, might be partially that I'm not good at it. Might be partially that uh, still a little under the weather, if you can't tell from my voice. Uh, Luke Murphy, he's just a bullpen guy. That guy was a beast for me in my. Uh, but I think that was one of my main bullpen guys with the Royals. So, yeah, let's see if we say like we'd like a prospect package, but we're not going to allow them to include anybody else. Let's see what they say. Let's see if like the Yankees or the Rays come back with anything. Ooh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like this is a this is oh extreme fly ball I hate that I hate that <laughs> uh, wow Devi Garcia Devi Garcia surprise yeah I mean this this package is really strong from the Yankees I just wish it was not all pitchers because I'd much rather with the way my farm system is I'd much rather acquire hitters at this point Colin Burns is not an Orioles prospect I'm familiar with. Six round in 2021. Weren't there only five rounds in that draft? Or is that the 2020 draft? Uh, okay. Bryce Miller is a dude. Oh, our friend Bryce Miller, who looks pretty good in this game. But I think I, I you know, the, the stronger packages are definitely, ooh, who's this guy? Nick Vogt. Uh, I mean, I'm not. He's, he's fine. That guy's got a long way to go. I mean, these are some pretty. These are some really strong packages. But I just. So let's see, like, what the strongest. Actually, let me try this. Alex Fiedo is a guy that we're really just kind of ready to move on from I think next year with all the pitching we have he struggled we've got guys pushing for him I wonder if he has any trade value like if we add him in no it doesn't look like it changed well they so the the Rays threw in this guy instead or not instead but along with uh the package they'd already offered decent pitcher to bring in as like a as like a throw in The Orioles are now offering Reed Trimble, who's a, an interesting prospect, but I'm not really interested in corner outfielders at this point. Adam Mazur. Yeah, I mean, some of these pitching prospects are, are solid. I just feel like I have so many. Um, and, and normally I would just take the best player available, but we are looking for a guy closer to the majors. I wonder if I went to the Yankees and I said, here, let's... Let's take all these guys out. And let's say we want Cabrera as Waldo Cabrera. Is he on their major league team? Did he get hurt? Did they trade him? <laughs> Did somebody else swoop in and say, wait, you want to give this guy away? Where is he? He's not on their prospect list. Let's go by position. I'm assuming he's probably listed as a second baseman. 
Oh, there he is, second base. Oh, wow, and he's caught fire. Because when they were offering to me, maybe they've changed their mind. When they were offering to me, he his bat was not that great on the year, which was a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah, he's just been hitting. Or maybe, it, yeah, his OPS has climbed 40 points, but I thought his OPS plus was right around 100. So, yeah, let's just see if they'll do it. He is not rated as a top 100 prospect here. Actually, you know what? Like, my scout likes Mace, the guy from the Rays better, um, which is kind of wild. Sometimes the, the real life versus how it goes here need to not be influenced what I think, you know, by Oswaldo Cabrera's prospect status in the majors. You know, last year I think he was like a top 50 prospect, top three or four in the Yankees system. He's ripping the cover off the ball in AAA, which is, is nice to see. But maybe I prefer the Rays guy and the other dudes that they're offering. Yeah, I think maybe I prefer this package. I know it's two pitchers, but the, the main return is Mason here, who we'd, we'd then get some experience at third base too. And what? so what's going on? Why is he not performing well? See, he should be in like at least high A. I think I'd put him... Oh, he is in high A. Never mind. I, was thinking, I think I'd put him in double A and just see how he does. Um... I think I might be ready to pull the trigger here on this one. We're getting, you know, I don't love this guy, but whatever. Keyshawn SQ. So I wonder, hold on, let's see single player from the Rays. Let's see if there's like a single batter that they're willing to give up. And then, um, oh wait, what are the Orioles offering here? Haskin. All right, fair enough. Like, I wonder, like, they're not going to throw in, like, Chandler Simpson, right? I already tried it. I tried to get Basabi and Bas and uh, Mason here, but they, they were like, no thanks. Cameron Misner, Meisner. Yeah, let's try to get Meisner in this deal, too. He's 25, but uh, is he a righty bat, please? No, nah, he's a lefty bat. Darn. Maybe I'm not as interested in him. <laughs> Maybe we can get him to throw in Willie Vasquez, too. Let's go. So let's shop this again to bring up that deal from the Rays. Oh, Joe Adele, was he here the whole time? And I just missed him. Yeah, I'm gonna pass on Joe Adele, but that's very interesting. I'm gonna pass on Bryce Miller. You guys might be screaming at me. Oh, these are different offers now. These are totally different offers. What happened? <laughs> I thought normally like the same offers came up if you if you shopped the same thing. Wow, Christian Pache is in Philly in this? Oh, they trade. Did that happen in real life? Huh. Okay. It's trade from the A's. Maybe I knew that. Maybe it didn't actually happen. I think it did. I think I remember being like, well, it's on another team, you know, onto a next team. Now, Nick, I mean, Nick Bitsko is kind of a crazy guy to offer me, um, but I'm not as interested in it as I am the other guys. So there's Mercado, and then let's go to high A. And throw in Mason. Let's remove Bitsko. And then there was that guy Triple A, whose name I'm hoping uh, Meisner. So this is, I think this is the deal we'd be we'd be happy to make. Let's submit it and see what they say. I don't think they're gonna take that. Let's sim for today. Let's see if we're at least close. Almost. Okay, so they want any of these guys. No, what I do, I just scan for like the oldest player and go to him first. Okay, I'm not trading you, Rosario. Uh, Tanner Colehep, I would be willing to trade you. How about some of these other guys? These are all younger players who still have a decent ceiling, so I think I'd go. Oh, Carlos Pena. Pena's having a really good season in Double A, but I don't know that he's gonna got a major future with us. So I think it's probably Pena or. Colehep, and I'm going to throw Colehep in. Yeah. So my assistant GM doesn't think they'll take this deal. They're saying they are going to take this deal. So we're going to go ahead and do this deal. Trading, you know, Fayedo, look, he could go figure it out somewhere, but it's not going to be here. Uh, Almora Jr., just 
free agent signing who, who worked out really well, and now the Rays want him to come play center field. So we're going to get Meisner, who is 25, a lefty corner outfield bat. Those are kind of generic, but really good eye, decent power, 65 range, which we like. Can't play anywhere in the infield, but I think he's more of like a fourth or fifth outfielder if he makes it up. Uh, Michael Mercado is a 24-year-old extreme fly ball pitcher. So again, another guy who is just like depth, I think, more than anything. And then the Mason here is the prize of the package. But he's far from a sure thing with where he is, but we're going to give him a shot. Line drive hitter can play a few different positions. So we're going to go ahead and complete this trade with the Rays. Uh, and hopefully, you know, hopefully the clubhouse is all right with it. Hopefully they understand. We're not going to be able to call up uh, Parker Meadows just yet. So we'll call up somebody else from the 40 man to take, uh, take the spot of Almora Jr. for now. Who will that be? Maybe Nick Maton, Kreidler, Veerling has not done anything down there. Um, Maton hasn't done much, but I think just because he's Nick Maton. Or I might have too many lefties. I might need to make it a righty that I call up. Yeah, look at all these lefty bats. Uh, yeah, I got to call up a righty, which actually might be Matt Veerling. Or Kreidler. Let's give Kreidler another, another shot. He's got a good glove. And then we can call up a pitcher to take Fiedo's spot. Um, Tarek Skubal came off his rehab assignment, which he was terrible on. And then he came up and he pitched four games, two innings for me, and had a 31.50 ERA. Now, nine home runs per nine, 833 Babbitt. You know, I'd say there was some bad luck involved there. Uh, Brieski is another young guy who we could give a shot to. Some of those other young pitchers, I don't really want to put them on the 40-man just yet because we don't need to. Uh, so there's Brieski, Skubo. Those guys have already been up. How old is Skubo now? 26. Yeah, let's let's promote him. So we'll call up Skubo. Uh, bump everybody up in the rotation here. Oops, did not mean to do that. And then who do we want to have start? I think we'll give it to Scooble. Just uh, Madden and Herder, both top one, top 55 prospects. I'd like to get a little more experience in the pen first before I throw them into the fire. So we'll let Scooble get probably knocked around a bit here. We'll go ahead and set his pitch count to 80 just because uh, he's struggled so much. Some short outings from Tarek Scooble. Uh, we'll figure out our outfield. You know, I think I think another guy that we could shop around at this point is Denelson Lamette, who's a free agent that I don't see us bringing back. Uh, this is another. We'd probably look for another prospect here who we can. Ooh, nothing, nothing. He's had a decent season out of the pen. Put up a three point oh seven ERA. Free agent. I'm surprised that there's nothing out there. Is it his salary? No, people just aren't interested. What if I say all players? Uh, no. Okay. So basically the only thing I'm probably going to get back is like, uh, a prospect or like a, a salary dump, but let's say, let's allow them to include other players, retain all his salary. You know, I'm sure they're going to come back like wanting to, uh, wanting to bring in really good prospects. This isn't moving. That's please don't crash game. <laughs> please don't make me redo that whole trade. Huh? I'm not really quite sure why it's stuck at 0%. Isn't this riveting? There it goes very slowly. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a little surprised that there's nothing out there for Denelson Lamette. Solid reliever. Probably not going to need, uh, you know, just like a low level. I was thinking like, you know, an A-ball, 24-year-old A-ball prospect who like was having a good season or something, right? Who doesn't have much of a future according to scouting. I was thinking maybe we'd get one of those type of guys back. I'm now sure. I'm sure now this prospect package is going to be like Lamette plus you know, your best player for this guy. But we'll just throw this out here just to see if there's any team who maybe we can we can target with a trade, kind of get their, their interests going here. And then, of course, probably not trade them, the other player who they're going to include. Yeah, Lipschitz, I'm not really looking to trade. Grant Levine. Everybody wants Lipschitz, huh? 
He's a lefty masher. I, I see him as a lefty masher for me. I'm not sure I really want to trade him. Although Cal Mitchell is a, an interesting enough name to get me to click. He's a bullpen arm. Oh, the stamina. I was like, why is he a bullpen arm? He's got these. So Jose Ferrer. Andrew Vasquez is a guy I'd be willing to give up if the if I was getting the return right. I'm not going to do it for a 25 overall. Wow, lots of interest in Lipschitz. Oh, here, Oswaldo Cabrera is again. Siegler, decent backup catcher. I don't really need one right now. Yeah, I mean, he's probably a better player than Lipschitz, but I'm not going to pull the trigger on that right now. Interesting reliever guy. But again, <clears throat> Lipchus is just not a guy that I'm... Oh, I could get Asa Lacey. Lipchus is just not a guy I'm looking to deal right now. While well, I appreciate the offers, I'm flattered. Um, I'm wondering... This is an interesting bullpen arm to me. I'm wondering if we... just offer them this if they'll come back with like a reasonable reasonable ask other than Lipschitz so let's go ahead and see almost Jenkins yeah I'd, I'd probably throw that guy in but the guy I'm getting back isn't that interesting you know well while, while these are all guys who I'm fine getting rid of it's not like I'm getting back a guy that I'm like super excited about okay I'm not trading any of these guys not even Tarek Skubal yet. We're not there yet. Uh, Pena, I feel like I should just shop around on his own, to be honest. Uh, I mean, Andrew Jenkins is a guy I'd be willing to trade. You know, again, this is like an interesting bullpen arm who is currently in high A at 23, pitching really well. I'd, I'd push him up the ladder further than that. Um, but it seems like he could be a decent bullpen arm. Andrew Jenkins, I don't, probably is not a future major leaguer. He's only 22, so he could take, you know, steps forward. Um, he has not done that this year. It's actually dropped a little bit in my scout's eye in some areas. So I think, I think I'm willing to put in Jenkins here and bring back Jose Ferrer, who could be a guy who pitches out of our bullpen, I think, and, and be a really good bullpen pitcher. You know, again, I, I, I know I say this all the time. I don't love the no movement, but I like his other stuff enough that, that I would trade Denelson Lamette in this deal. Um, it's just kind of punting on the season. Nah, it's, it's moving in that direction. But we're stocking another arm in our farm system, a possible back of the bullpen arm. So let's go ahead and complete that trade too. And uh, let's we'll have to call somebody up here from the minors. I think it's probably going to be Castro, who is just not pitched well, unfortunately. But he's not pitched well in double A or triple A. He's not pitched well. He's been up with me. But at this point in the season, he's a guy who I want to give some time to based off of what my scout thinks of him. Uh, we'll put Matt Whistler in the other setup role. Give him some high leverage. Let's make his other one high leverage. And Castro will come in and make middle relief. We'll give him some setup time too. Just throw him right into the fire. Um, oh, I didn't really have a center fielder in for that game. And I lost 10 to 1. <laughs> Forgot to set up my own. Who played center field for us? Uh, oh, Riley Green. That's fine. Who got blasted? Turnbull, Shreve, Madden. Okay. So, the trades have started. I don't know if we've done anything franchise-altering, but I think there's some good trades. I think if there's a franchise-altering trade, it's Eduardo Rodriguez. I'll work around on that. We'll come back, maybe do a little of the trade deadline, maybe wrap it up. But I wanted to have you guys there for some of the trades we're doing, and, and we'll see if we make any more. July 30th now. I've done some shopping around. I don't think we're going to trade Eduardo Rodriguez I think it's a salary maybe that is scaring teams off, but really just 
only getting offers from a few teams when I shop when I shopped him. Uh, surprising for how good he's been, but you know maybe they just don't have the, the money to take him on this year. But there was like one or two decent prospects I was being offered back. But honestly, like at this point, I'd rather just get the compensation pick, assuming I can get it right. Uh, I'd imagine was he probably offered one before he signed this deal with the Tigers. Normally it tells you here, but again, maybe like out of the park doesn't remember that historically and everybody's just eligible uh, their first year. If he's not like, oh, well, if he opts out and we don't get a compensation pick, we'll, we'll get over it. But I'm not, I'm not going to trade him for what's available out there. If he can pitch anywhere near what he's pitched this year, we're fine with him sticking around for the next three years with that at that dollar amount. We did get a deal offered from the Mets that I think I'm going to take. So Matt Whistler is a free agent after the year. I don't really intend to bring him back. So he's a reliever with a 2.57 ERA. Peripherals not nearly as good, but the Mets are interested in the bullpen. They also want us to send 24-year-old, 24-year-old minor league first baseman Chris Myers, which I'm fine doing. Don't really see a huge future for this guy. He was hitting really well in limited duty in high A. But he wasn't even really starting 13th round pick in 2021. But sitting over two decently interesting guys. This guy is 20 years old and looks like a decent player. He's in low A right now. Not a great defensive profile, but uh, if we can get this guy back for a reliever on expiring deal, I'm, I'm doing that all day. And Luis Rodriguez is just kind of a, a a pitcher who has a long way to go. He's only 20. I don't necessarily expect him to pan out, but this is just adding a guy to our organization who's only 20 and maybe we can work some magic with. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and make this trade. We're going to complete the trade and send those guys on their way to our team. I would imagine both would be towards the low minors once our, my dude uh, figures out where he wants them. They're both only 20, so we'll see. I don't really expect a lot more here to happen. Uh, you know, we... There aren't other guys that we're really looking to trade. Spencer Turnbull, I could see trading, but I think probably in the off season we'll stick keep him keep him around. You know, there's still like an outside chance this team gets hot, and we're not losing him this year in free agency. He's had a good season, but the return's not going to be amazing for him. Might as well just hold on to him and then trade him in the off season. Uh, same with like a guy like Scooble, who I'm not sure is uh, in our plans unless he really gets a lot better here. He's coming off a major arm injury. Hopefully, he'll shake off the rust. Uh, Chase and Shreve, there weren't really offers out there for, uh, Jason Foley, there weren't offers out there for hitting side of things. I think, you know, Austin Meadows will be in his last year team control next year, but that would be an off season decision. Nick Gordon and his MVP season. I think that's an off season decision, what we do with him. So there, there's really nowhere, no one else we're looking to get rid of. Of, of course, if, if something wild happens here at the trade deadline, I'll let you know, but I, I, I don't really anticipate more trades. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll, but we'll jump through the trade deadline and then uh, wrap, wrap up this video and then get into the home stretch of the season with the Tigers. Okay, the trade deadline is passed. We didn't make any more moves. There, I didn't get any offers. Um, I did shop Scooble and there were some interesting trades out there some teams still are pretty high on him which is understandable um and osa is higher on him than my scout uh i think teams still see him as somebody who can pitch uh second or third in their rotation based off some of the offers i was getting maybe not that high but they see him as a very viable uh major league pitcher who still has three years major league starting pitcher who still has three years of team control left coming off an arm injury so there's some risk there wasn't like a trade where I was like, let's do this right now. I think that this is something I will revisit in the off season when maybe I can also look at getting more major league talent back too, right? If, if teams are interested in him and willing to give up a good bit, I will certainly trade him in the off season. And so I, I decided not to go for any of the prospects that I was being offered um, and instead just pump that decision to the off season. Like, like we'll do with like Austin Meadows, Nick Gordon, some of these guys will keep, some guys will trade um, in terms of around the league. They're, Otani was not traded. There were a couple bigger ones. And I'm sure I might miss some that you guys see. Uh, this was... <laughs> so Alex Wood was having an amazing season. Oh, they retained 95% of the deal. He was having an amazing season for the Giants. And they signed him to an extension. But I guess that probably doesn't retain the extension, right? No, that's just this year. So you can see Wood 
He's got a three two point seven nine ERA. He's on pace for five point seven WAR, six point four R WAR. R WAR. So you can see why the Padres, who are in first place, would want him. But you know they gave up Jackson Merrill, the number thirteen prospect, who was in he was doing really well in high A as a twenty year old, and then uh, doing fine in double A. But uh, man, if I knew Jackson Merrill was out there, I, I might have been in on him and offering uh, a package uh, for him as well. They also got uh, Ethan Salas, who is a top 200 prospect, but still just a long ways away. Um, and then some other dudes, too. So this guy's older. Yeah, he's been around all the 23. So it was a big trade. Um, Martin Perez went to the Diamondbacks. Haney went to the Mariners. The big one, there's a big one down here. And again, you guys might notice some that I don't as I'm scanning. Here it is. Matt Chapman going to the Orioles to play third base. Gunner's playing short. Uh, Orioles give up top 100 prospect Connor Norby, who was in AAA for them and hitting really well. He's now in AA for the Jays, but okay. Uh, but they get uh, a couple months of Matt Chapman. And so the O's are, are going for it here. They're seven and a half out of the division, but they are in the third wild card spot. And now I have Matt Chapman, who was actually having a really bad year. So that's a terrible trade. But hey, maybe he'll catch fire for them and, and, and be the difference. But giving up a top 100 prospect for that guy, I don't know. Oh, they brought in Seth Brown, too, who's apparently now their left fielder. They gave up a couple minor leaguers for him. Did they trade like Austin Hayes, or is he on their bench now? Oh, Hayes is on the bench. Got it. All right. So anyways, we're 50 and 56. The trade deadline is done. That's the end of this episode. We'll come back in the next episode and, and wrap up the season, uh, kind of launch into our offseason plan. You know, I guess there's there's still a miracle to be had here, five and a half games and like 39 teams back in the wild card. I don't, I'm not holding out hope, but uh, hey, you never know. We, we could be kicking off the next video with a party, but we'll probably but just be kicking it off with uh, a season wrap up. All right, thanks for watching. Talk to you guys next time.